Today I'm gonna to show you how to make this simple cat mask. So I use about five to six ounce vegetable tanned leather. It's heavy enough to hold its shape, but light enough that it's not a struggle to mold. The first thing that I always do is trace my mask onto the leather. I like to use these kind of uh, utility blades just because I can easily and quickly um, switch to a new sharp blade. It's time to do a little bit of thinning around the edges of the leather. I use one of these safety bevelers. A good place to start is the ears, because that's pretty forgiving. I'm probably only going about a third to a half way through the thickness of the leather. And I just go all the way around. My next step is to trace on the kind of fur pattern. I do like to go in with a modeling spoon. It just helps to kind of open the line up so it looks a little less like just a cut. So now that I'm basically done with the surface of the mask, it's time to mold it. You do want to always give it a moment to soak in that water before you start doing the next step. I can even test that when I move it, it'll stay where I put it. I like to take the end of this burnisher to just smooth that edge and kind of take off that hard corner that the leather has. And it's all those kind of little details that add up to a really good final result. We're really gonna focus on the bridge of the nose because that is what is going to help keep the mask in the right place and get it to, to just fit well on the face. Once you've done the shaping, then you can put it on your own face and kind of just detail the shaping a little. Once you've got it placed, you wanna pinch the leather to the side of the nose a tool like this is also nice for this step because it's a little easier to get that leverage to really get in here and kind of jam the leather down into the bridge of the nose. It's got its most important shape, but the rest of it's still really flat. So I want to go in and just with my thumb and my fingers, I'm just kind of rolling under all of these edges. So I'm kind of over folding it, but it will naturally flatten out as we do the rest of the shaping. So. I have lines here that show the fur coming in front of the ears. So I've got my finger curled behind the leather, just kind of behind where this line of fur is. So I'm gonna push the ear back. I'm curling the leather over my finger while pulling the ear, kind of keeping it straight. So I'm sort of just almost kind of folding it right there. So now I wanna get it back on my face form. And even though it's kind of all flattened out, the shape of that bridge of the nose is still there. And it only takes a second to completely get it back. I'm just gonna kind of roll this up to sort of support the ears while they dry. Um, and then you gotta leave it alone. And ideally at least overnight. Now that I have a completed and completely dry cat mask, it's ready to get some color. I'm gonna be using one color of water-based dye, um, white acrylic paint, and one color of uh, Highlight Stain Antique. I like to start with getting the black around the eyes. I am using a eighth inch flat brush. I also wanna make sure I get that cut edge because it'll show if I don't. I like to keep the backs of my masks natural because if you leave the back side unfinished, then it can form to the person's face as they wear them. Um, it has sort of a little more ability to be a little less hot. So to get the main body color, I'm gonna use the EcoFlow Highlight Stain. These are what I'm gonna use to wipe off the excess. With any kind of antique, the idea is definitely to get it on quickly and get it off quickly. For this step, I have a bigger brush. You really do want to not be afraid to grab a lot of it. I wanna work pretty fast, because the faster I get it kind of rubbed off, the more even my color is gonna be. Got all that color on there, it looks pretty even. I still have some of this on my brush. I'm gonna add a little water just by dipping my brush in the water, because for putting it on the back side of the leather, it kinda helps to have it a little bit watered down. And this I'm not wiping off. I'm just basically using it like a dye or a paint. Now that I've got the base color on the whole mask, I'm ready to use some white acrylic paint to brush on highlights. The technique I'm gonna be using is dry brushing. 
As you might be able to guess from the name dry brushing, my brush is dry. I'm grabbing you know, a glob of white paint. I'm basically brushing the white paint on the palette, like I'm painting this little piece of the palette. But right now I still have a lot of excess paint on here. With your paper towel, basically tell yourself you're wiping off all the paint on the brush. So there's still paint in these bristles. Because it's so little, it's almost like smudging on, you know, chalk or pastels or something. And that's kind of the point of dry brushing is having very little on your brush and building up in thin layers as I do this very fast, kind of light, very light brush strokes. When you're placing the holes, which is where the ribbon ties will go in, try holding it in a few different places, a little higher and lower, and pulling it back against your face so you can feel how it will sit. If you're doing ribbons, you'll want to cut the end of it to a point to thread it through the hole. So I can stick the point here and pull it through, and then I just tie it in a knot. Once you've done that, you'll want to trim the ends because especially the end that you pulled through usually gets a little ratty. When the color on your mask has been able to dry for at least overnight, um, 24 hours is even better, it's a good idea to put a finish coat on. It'll just uh, make sure it's, it's not going to rub off um, and will just protect everything a little bit more. Now we have our completed leather cat mask. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm Annie Libertini, and this is how I make my mark.